Welcome. You're listening to Sports Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Vern Glenn of CBS Affiliate, KPIX TV in San Francisco, and Russell Jackman. And at each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. And today it's, he hung up his cleats where? That's our, yeah. that's our joke. He hung up his cleats where? Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, the various topics I have, and then we'll see if you guys want to jump in too. Uh, coronavirus helping the game of golf. Interesting. Uh, curious, the Nationals invite Biden, but not Trump, or the Cubs didn't invite Trump uh, to throw out the first pitch way back when. Tony La Russa charged with DUI just before the White Sox hired him. And NFL ex uh, players exchanging pleasantries after the game. Uh, COVID, anyone? So those are topics I have. Yeah. And, uh, and it's still there's a lot of injuries going on in the NFL. Holy smokes. Well, when did that ever stop happening? I when do injuries ever stop happening in the NFL? Yeah, but yeah, that's just part of the game. Yeah, but it just, I, I don't know, for some reason, it just seems even. Well, I do think there's an overall lack of conditioning for guys when you don't have the preseason, you know? And Absolutely, but training it's still camps going on. Were, were so abbreviated yeah. like they were. And guys weren't able to keep in shape during the off season because a lot of guys weren't able to work out or, or keep their regular routines yeah. during uh, the COVID crisis. True. Okay, so this uh, segment of Sports Econ 101, sponsored by Pacific Private Money, providing mortgage investments. Get this: last month it was 7.7 percent. Still, can you? 7.7. Okay. 7. Can you tell 7, us yeah. when you've got a hundred percent return, though? I'll invest. Uh, that I don't think about 14 years. It's so funny because there was a guy who wanted to invest, and he says, "You know what? For the last three years, I've had a hundred thousand dollars sitting in a money market account that's earning, you know, 0.3 percent. So he's earned like, you know, a thousand dollars. He says, "How much would I've earned with you guys? Uh, about." $22,000. <laughs> Quite a big difference. All right. Uh, check them out at PacificPrivateMoney.com. Stay with us. Sports Econ 101 is going to be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown, Vern Glenn, and Russell Jackman here. Uh, okay. So first of all, I was looking at this. The coronavirus has actually helped the game of golf. Um, sales of equipment are up and so are rounds. You know, you figure it's how many things can you do with social distancing, especially outside. Right. I mean, even plus, you know, there's just so many legions of people playing the game that, you know, that, that haven't been able to get out there because of various restrictions in whatever county that, that, that you live in. I mean, you're just you're just sitting around. You're having cabin fever. If, if, if you don't have the luxury of having a backyard, you can go and just hit balls, butt balls or whatever. I mean, you're just <laughs> you're just stuck. And so so all of a sudden these restrictions are, are, are left a little bit. and You can get out there and uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah, you want to you, you want to hit golf more. You want to hit your golf store. You want to get the uh, you know this equipment, that equipment. You you want to get out there and play. Yeah, I have a. I, I played have, yesterday. <laughs> did you? I have, I have a yeah. friend who I have a friend who uh, he lived in Maui and he owned enough acreage and he really loved golf that he was able to put two holes, you know, that were few couple few hundred yards. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, there you go. You go in your own backyard. You can actually. Play some golf, you know? Uh, yeah, you I'd do it. That'd be great. Yeah, where'd you play? Well, I played Harding. Oh. TPC okay. Harding yesterday. Now, Russ, yeah, I it was, you, uh, yeah, it was just beautiful, pristine condition. You should see, Vern, you should, or uh, Russell, you should watch Vern play golf. He may, he may, he may not be the tallest <laughs> man in the world, but I'll tell you, he can smack them like it's nobody's business. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> golf is one thing that uh, physical size really doesn't matter very much. You yeah, know, it's, it's the uh, the physics. We you know the the. It's sort of like you know when you go to a uh, a fair, and you know you hit the thing down and the beep pops up. It, it's not these big strong guys. It's the it's the um, physics Art. of, of uh, yeah of being able to. Yes, yeah, the guys that have the technique to do it. That's it. Well, I, well, 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 as much as I'd love Edward to be my agent, Mr. Jackman, I, I'm not that good. I, I, I'm really not. But, uh, but for 18 holes, I'm a pretty good hang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you won't be in your group for, for comic relief. <laughs> you can, you can, you can, uh, you can uh, hold it with the best of them. Let's put it that way. My, um, my only golf experience is mini golf. I've never actually been on an actual course. And I, I, after my hip surgery in 2016, oh. it's not something I'm picking up anytime soon. 
No, I. Uh, no, that's too bad. That, that's that's too bad because this this golf course we played yesterday was uh, uh, it, it was as if the PGA Championship had just finished. I mean, it was in that good of condition. So it was pretty. It was pretty cool. Played with a couple of guys uh, in from out of town that, uh, that 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 are just golf nuts and uh, we went out there and, uh, and and walked the entire course and it was uh, it was it was fabulous. See, if you're I'm a sore good, a little bit today, but yeah, it was okay. You know, if you're if you're a good golfer. 18 holes, you know, is okay. I, I'm, for me, I, I mean, I'm okay. I, I, like, sometimes I can really, you know, hit nice and far and straight, but it's not consistent enough. And so just for me, not losing a ball is where I like to be. Because it's just 18 holes. I, I did go through the round without losing a ball. I mean, and, that, and that's a rarity. That is a rarity. So, and is yeah, that a hard that, course? Is it a hard course? I've never played it. It's it's a, it's it's a hard course if you don't keep it in the fairway. I mean, you could you can go maybe you could go maybe five ten yards left to right, you know, in, in the rough and not be in too much jail. Okay. But uh, but but beyond that, well, forget it. I mean, you're just you just you're just hitting it back on the on the fairway just to kind of lay up and, and set up your next shot. So so imagine the conditions for the PGA Championship where the rough was very severe. I mean, so so it it, it tells you that it, that you have to be in the fairway at all times if you're going to score. I hate timing the windmill. Yeah. <laughs> or how about hitting, hitting through the clown's mouth? Yeah. There you go. I, no, actually, it's those ones that have the little volcano. The, the those ones that have that volcano where you have to get it up and it has to perfectly yeah, those land those, in the there. Okay. Those I hate. Yeah, they're gonna, the they'll, that'll patient. test your patience. Okay, I'm gonna, I, we're going to get into a little little bit of politics here. So the Nationals uh, invited... Be sorry. Yeah, well, the Nationals invited Biden uh, to uh, throw out the first pitch. And that's kind of been a typical thing for the World Series champion to invite the president to do it. You know, George Bush... Not anymore that. now. Well, that's, that's what's interesting is like the Cubs won it, but they didn't uh, invite Trump. I think that was wasn't that the there first were time? there were uh, 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 when Obama was president there were teams that didn't uh, well not every team's going to invite him but no didn't didn't Obama throw out the first pitch uh, yes he did but but like when teams uh, but, well, but but Obama's from Chicago yes yeah but uh, you know uh, Bush throwing out the first pitch I think uh, yeah that's because he owned the team yeah he owned the Texas Rangers sure. So wait a minute now. Okay, hold on. Taft threw out the first pitch. <laughs> Taft, <okay. laughs> he, he got that one. Nineteen ninety. Then he didn't own anything. You know. <laughs> I mean, is, that, is, Taft, is that a hint of our, where our trivia is going to be coming from? Is the uh, Taft era? No, 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 no. Uh, let's see. And, uh, I, and, and no? I think I, I think I think ge I think to be geographically kind of I guess convenient. Uh, because the Nationals are in Washington, D.C., it's convenient for whoever the sitting president is to come out and throw the first pitch at a Nationals game. I mean, that's, that's nothing. So, uh, exactly. And, and, Biden, uh, and, Biden, and Biden's a big, he, Biden's a big time Philadelphia Phillies fan. You know, grew up in that area. So uh, he, he, he normally wears his Philly cap all the time. So uh, for Fred to throw up for the Nationals, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, have, well, I mean, I don't have, a, I don't have a problem one. with them, them asking him. I'm just wondering, it's like, was there so much animosity back for the 2016 Hillary Clinton, you know, uh, Trump victory, you know, Trump winning, that everybody just automatically said, well, we're not going to have anything to do with this president. You know, like he, like, cause remember when, when the Warriors won, they said, w w whether he invites us or not, we're not going. You know what I mean? There's just seemed yeah, to but he won in he, but, but but Trump won in no Trump won in November 2016. The uh, when was that World Series over? Are you trying are you, are you trying to say that are you trying to say they invited they invited him the next year or, or they didn't no, invite no, no, him well, the next year for 2017? Okay. I guess let's go to let's go to this question. Has any team ever invited Trump to throw out uh, a a pitch? Did you remember the reception no. that he got with the Nationals when Trump showed up at the Nationals Park? Mm. Yeah. Why would <laughs> you want him throwing out a first pitch when he's going to get booed by three quarters of the audience? Uh, yeah. I don't think, outside of golf, I don't think he has any athletic ability whatsoever. And I don't, I don't think, think he, he really is into sports, to be, to be honest with you. Yeah, and I don't think he has much <laughs> athletic ability when it comes to golf either. 
I've heard he right. like crazy. Pick it up. Throw it. Yeah. Yeah. Hole in one. Hole in one. Hole in one. Did, did you guys ever see the movie uh, Welcome to Mooseport? No. Uh, that, that's kind of fun with uh, Ray Romano and I think it's Gene Hackman. And uh, Gene Hackman is like the, the, the ex-president, but he's going to run for mayor. And um, Ray Romano is a good uh, golfer. And they're kind of going against each other to be mayor. Yeah, and Ray, Ray is like nobody in the town, but he's, they're both running against each other to be mayor. And they end up playing golf. And, uh, and, and so uh, the ex-president says, you know, well, I know that you're a good golfer, so you got to give me, um, you know, uh, you got to give me two throws throws he goes yeah let me throw the ball throws. he goes uh, okay <laughs> so, so dean hackman takes ray romano's ball and throws it in the woods you know? <laughs> so you just imagine you know uh mr 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 president trump uh <laughs> going around the rules to, um, <laughs> like you said playing golf wouldn't be the first time wouldn't be the first time okay okay so we're going to go to our first trivia question here and the uh theme is he hung up his cleats where all right. What was the last NFL team for which Franco Harris played? Now, Franco Harris, we all Oof. remember him for the Imagine Reception. Yeah. And uh, what, what team did he play for during that time? Steelers, right? The Steelers. Yeah, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right. But, was it? but he played for a different team. His last NFL team he played. He ended his career with a different team. You, you, yeah. Essentially, what team did Franco Harris end up his in, in his NFL career with? There you go. That's, that's Don't go fun. looking it up on on Google. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're looking at we're looking at uh, Vern's eyes, kind of going, "Is he is he looking this up?" And his fingers <laughs> beginning to tap there. Yeah, uh, I, I I don't have this. Keep your hands where we can see him. <laughs> yeah, I don't have this question, but if you remember Johnny Unitas, he ended up his career with the. Chargers, San Diego Chargers. With the San Diego Chargers. Yeah, uh, even though he's a Baltimore Corps. Okay, stay yeah. with us. Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. One more time. Edward Brown here, along with Vern Glenn and Russell Jackson. We got more than one more time here. Okay, another time. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know, you just would like just keep going and going and going. You okay. you never heard me on like a full-on like telephone conversation with my friends, which can last like two hours. On sports, so yes. I don't have that kind of stamina. Oh, I do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here, first trivia question about <clears throat> he hung up his he hung up his cleats. Where? What was the last NFL team for which Franco Harris played? I'm going to say the Oilers. Right. Just pure guess. Yeah, Houston Oilers. That, that that's that was that was my guess. No, Seattle Seahawks. God, I, I don't remember I, that. I don't remember that at all. All. Oh. Not even the slightest. And I didn't make this question up. Seattle Seahawks. Okay. Yeah, well, the, the, the fledgling new franchise. Yeah. Holy smokes. What's going on there? Now look, yes. Yeah. Well, the, the, the Russell Wilson changes the whole landscape. You know, it was, it was interesting because when uh, Seattle moved to the NFC West, I was like, oh, great. You know, we're getting <laughs> rid of the Saints who have always been, you know, a thorn in the side to the 49ers and and we're getting a team that you know was the also ran of the AFC West that you know was everybody's punching bag back then like that. and you know now they're one of the best teams in the league and they've been that way for almost a decade and and it's uh, pretty brutal for us Niner fans to have to deal with Seattle there I, I almost hate Seattle as much as I hate the Cowboys Whoa! But Holy not God. quite. Whoa, wait, 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 not what? quite. Not quite. What about the Rams? The Rams, I dislike, but I don't have a ground in hatred for them because their fans are not as obnoxious as the Dallas Cowboy fans. Yeah, but it's There's from LA. More obnoxious in the entire universe than a Dallas Cowboy fan. Well, okay, so wait, but okay, but they are from LA, and you don't like the Dodgers. No, I don't, and I don't like the Rams. But the Niners have always got scoreboard over the Rams. Well, not 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 back in the '60s and '70s and early '70s, but I but in the last when know, I was like, zero <laughs> years old, yeah, that that doesn't bother <laughs> me. But since I was in a since I could watch football. 49ers, you know, have scoreboard over the Rams. Yes, so. but what about Roman Gabriel and Norm Van Brocklin and all those guys? You, you just totally forget about them? Yes, I did. Since, <laughs> uh, since they were – I wasn't in existence during then, yes. I don't, it doesn't break my heart that they beat Y.A. Tittle and, and <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. You know, I got over that. 
got to open that. Plus, plus, the other thing with the Dodgers is, you know, the Dodgers and the Giants, I mean, they had their history when they were in New York. Then they just moved over to out west, and, and, and the rivalry kind of continued. In the case of the L.A. Rams, I mean, they, they moved to St. Louis for, 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 for the longest time. Probably they were in St. Louis probably when Mr. Jackman was born. And so, no, so for them to come back to, so so when they come back to Los Angeles, it's just it's almost like a it's a it's a fresh start for them to kind of get this whole True. but they're in the same hatred team. thing going, you know. And then uh, they you know they had a good team, you know, making it to the Super Bowl a couple. Of years. I never liked the Rams. Please don't 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 count me in that. But but Ram fans tend to not be as obnoxious as Cowboy fans are because they're celebrities. They got other things to do during the day. It's they like, never oh, call themselves America's team. No, that's true. Plus, they, plus, plus, they were in Los Angeles. It's Hollywood. You yeah. got to get the glitter and the stars on the sidelines and this, that, and the other. I mean, there was just there's just too much going on in Hollywood for 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 anybody to get this deep rooted passion one way or the other. Yeah, it's not the, the only, It's not the only thing in town. And another exactly. thing that makes me hate Dallas is 1993 to 1996. Sure, Troy Aikman taking him. Uh, Super Bowl three, just keep beating up on the Bills, right? Well, yeah, but the Niners were the real Super Bowl. The the, the 49ers versus Dallas. I think everyone thinks of those years between 1993-1996 as uh, uh, the real Super Bowl was when the 49ers faced Dallas. Yeah, those okay. NFC Championship games, those those divisional playoff games. That's 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 when everybody just stood on the edge of their seats and watched. Yeah, because when the uh, when when Steve Young won it uh, again, the Super Bowl against the Chargers, it, it wasn't that close. But the but the NFC Championship game stands yeah. out in my mind as one of the greatest games I've ever watched in my entire life. Football, baseball, basketball, golf, you name it. That particular NFC Championship game is one of the highlights of re my. Re re remind the audience uh, what happened in that specific uh, championship. Well, that was the one where, uh, you know, you had uh, Deion Sanders really step up. And, and my, the Michael Irvin versus Deion Sanders matchup in the, uh, in the, in the, back, in the uh, uh, receiving versus uh, uh, defensive backfield, it was, that, that, that was really the marquee matchup everybody wanted to see. Yeah. And it did not disappoint. Yeah, that was, the, the, that, that was a complete game, and they were able to contain uh, – uh, Emmett Smith, who had hamstring problems at the time, and 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 it was such a such a huge win at Candlestick for the Niners. I can re remember Steve Young kind of doing his victory lap, yeah, you know, just just running all over the place, and it was Got just the uh, monkey off just, his back. Yeah. Uh, well, that was the Super Bowl. Yeah, the monkey off the back. Yeah, but I think but, uh, beating Dallas was the real monkey. You know, knowing that we could get past Dallas, I think everyone assumed the 49ers were going to win against San Diego, and that turned out to be the case. Well, you know, but the, 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 the famous monkey off the back clip was from the Super Bowl. Right, right, when right. Gary, when, 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 when Steve talk, turned to Gary Plummer, the, the linebacker, and said, please take this monkey off my back, and Plummer kind of did this. Oh, so yeah, that, was, right. that, that, that was the That was the big moment. Well, I tell you, you know, it's funny because you think of like Richard Sherman. Uh, you know, he's not 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 quite a Deion Sanders, but boy, was anyone more fun to watch than Deion Sanders? You know, this is. Uh, I mean, we're never going to have a two-sport athlete again. It, it's yeah, it's really, really, really hard to get someone like that. I guess what Bo Jackson was kind of. It was just it was just, a, it was just a dynamic star. I mean, he 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 could he could talk the talk and walk the walk. He could back up everything. He could just. You know, he, he he could play in a baseball game same day. Go play in the football game and just and just light it up. I mean, there's there's not we're, we're not going to see that again. Not 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 at the highest level. It's, it's just they pay too much for athletes now. You know, they, they you, when you're paying hundred million bucks for an athlete or two hundred million or three hundred million, yeah. you don't want him. You know, having another day job. Well, that's why I got to take Madison Bumgarner and say stop riding those. You know, mini bikes and whatever, you know, motorcycles. And, 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 and bull ride or, uh, and yeah. rodeo riding. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, under an assumed name. I forget what his, uh, I forget what his name was, but he gave a fake name yeah. to, to participate in the rodeos. I mean, and can you imagine the reasons why I was and watching your, your star pitcher? <laughs> you know, if you find out, you know, what is he doing on that bull? Or that that's why I wasn't, right. I wasn't upset that the Giants didn't re sign him because yeah. to me, I don't think his mind is fully on becoming another great World Series pitcher again. He has other things in his mind 
that he likes as much or maybe more than pitching in baseball. And, and don't he, you just but, love that what he gave his wife for a wedding present? He gave her a cow. Uh, a cow. A cow. <laughs> I love that. Because now he can say, don't have a cow because you already got one. Yeah, that's yep. right. Okay. Uh, before we get to a break, uh, NFL players exchanging pleasantries after the game. I mean, these guys are still, like, pretending COVID's not existing. And, you know, it's one thing when you're on the field and, you know, I, I mean, I guess, you know, you get, a, you get your helmet on and you're still kind of, you know. Not you, know why, you, you, you know why they're doing that, Edward? You, you, you know why they're doing it? Because they get, they get tested every single day, sometimes twice. And so they're thinking, look, we just smashed into each other for three hours. And, and we've all been we've, – we've all tested negative – What's wrong with a bro hug at the end of the game? So then why can't, like, John Gruden and all the other guys who are wearing masks, I assume everybody gets tested before going on the field. Coaches, everybody. Why do they have to wear masks? It's a good enough question. And talk to, uh, you know, um, a couple of uh, coaches who've been fined, you know, $100,000. Yeah, yeah. You know, I but, mean, what's, what, you know, why that protocol? I mean, especially, you know, with, with – everybody's so close together in general they're not doing six feet apart when they're on the sidelines or any of that stuff because they don't they don't want any they, they don't want any unnecessary fluids things flying in the air during the course of the game that uh, that 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 are you know not that, that, that are that can't that can't be avoidable not a you know, yeah. these 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 head-on collisions there, you know, you can't you you can't avoid that. I mean, that's part of the game. That's why you test the players. But for 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 the coaches, as much as they scream, yell, work on the officials on the sidelines, uh, they 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 want to be try and contain that as much as they can. So go ahead I think and wear the a NFL mask. wants to send the image to the public that they're taking it super seriously. Yeah, I think, they don't I think want, yeah, that's a good point. You know, an example. And, spe set. and speaking and, and speaking of taking it seriously. And and I and I'm, I'm segueing a little bit to the college ranks. Did you see the end of the Notre Dame Clemson game when Notre Dame won the game and eleven thousand students jumped on the field and it was just it was just a giant petri dish all over the field of these and and and, and then they were they got reprimanded the next day by the school president, but the school president had just been at the Rose Garden. For for the for the not socially distant ceremony, the swearing in of the the new Supreme Court judge, and he got COVID. Yeah, that, you're wondering why you know we're having COVID surges of of you know mythical proportion right now. All and it isn't just us. I mean, Europe too, and and yeah. and and Asia is now you know having a resurgence. Uh, uh, it's not pretty. So it's going to be a herd immunity around the world, probably. Okay, here's our millions dead. Fight. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're, he hung up. He hung up his cleats. Where? That's our question. For whom? For whom? Which team did O.J. Simpson play his final NFL season? I remember, he played for a few teams. Oh, that's that that that's a layup. That, that's that a layup. Yeah, come on. That 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 that's a layup. Don't forget, he also played for another – he played for how many teams? Three teams? All right. Well, we'll come – don't worry. Stay tuned. Sports Econ 101 will be right back with that answer. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Vern Glenn and Russell Jackman. Second trivia question was a layup for our boys here. Uh, for whom did uh, mm -hmm. Odin Simpson play his final NFL season? Well, I was actually at, oh, the, was at the game. Yeah, I was actually at the game, <laughs> um, in the 49ers. Uh, and the thing was, my, my dad would take us to the game, and he would go to the scalpers, right? And he would wait till the kickoff actually happened. And then he would wind up getting, buying one ticket, and he would get two extra tickets for free for my brother and myself. And I remember him haggling over $10 over a ticket. So he got three tickets for $10 to go see O.J. Simpson's final game. Wow. And it was not pretty, and we <laughs> lost, and we had a 2-14 and 14 season. But it led to Joe Montana, so it was still worth, you know, the, the, the agony, you know, that, 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 we, that we underwent. On yeah, but $10 was a lot back in 1942. Ah, well, no, we're talking like 1978, I think, 79. 78, something like that, yeah. Yeah, probably 78, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and the whole thing was 
the interesting part about that was my entire life I'd gone to see 49er games. And every single game that I had seen, the 49ers had lost. The very first time that I saw the 49ers win a game in person was in 1981. And that's when they won the Super Bowl. Is that, and then I had a streak. Whenever I would see the Niners win in person, they'd win the Super Bowl. But that's, that, that streak's been broken, you know, uh, significantly since then. But I uh, Well, so, so, for, so you started off as kind of the cooler, and yes. then, then they started winning games. And then you, you won a hot streak. That's right. And then that went yeah. back to cold. And I'm still hoping for another Super Bowl, but a Super Bowl win. You know, Not always, this year. I've, Not only been this year. To, I've only been to one football game in my life. And uh, yeah, seriously, and that was uh, the Los uh, Oakland Raiders against the Cincinnati Bengals, and we demolished them. Uh, and this was, I think, the first year of Monday Night Football because it was a Monday Night Football game. Wow, nineteen seventy. Yeah, that was the only time I ever. Wow. Went to yeah, first year. Yeah. Gosh, you, you should buy a ticket to go now. I mean, you could go. Well, you're, go. you're, geez, you're, you're kind of long overdue, Edward. <laughs> geez, 19. <laughs> so, geez. You know what? I, I gotta say that it's so much. I, I love the idea of watching it at home. I can now with DVR and all that kind of stuff. I can pause it. I can go get a sandwich. I can go, you know, go to the restroom, lie in my easy. Yeah, chair, but Edward, the right weather. Can, can you brag that you saw? Can you say that you saw the catch too? With, uh, with live in person with uh, with live on the TV, yes. Yeah, no, a lot of people <laughs> did, but I was actually in the park for for uh, uh, the catch too with uh, Terrell Owens. They they were just talking about that with the Green Bay, you know, uh, uh, game that the Forty ers had. You know, they were going over the history of Green right. Bay versus the Forty ers I mean, I, I get it because I, I still remember. Uh, I still, I still remember like, exactly this uh, situation of, of baseball, uh, watching uh, extra innings, Giants versus the Phillies. I was there at the game. Willie Mays hits a home run to end the game. You know, and to be able to, you know, to he had a walk off. off. Great. And, yeah. And so that, you know, that was exciting. And I, you know, and then, you know, later on, obviously Barry Bonds, you know, being able to, to watch him and, you know, tell, tell the kids and the grandkids, you know, but I think, I, I think I told you this once before Vern knows this one is uh, my mom's great uncle came to visit us uh, one time and I was looking through old baseball cards and long story short, he, he, he said, you know, you ever heard of Hans Wagner? And I said, you mean Hannes Wagner? He says, yeah, we, we used to call them hands. I mean, what do you mean we? He goes, yeah, I grew up in Pittsburgh. He goes, we used to sneak into the games and watch Hans Wagner. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that watching Hans <laughs> Wagner play? One of the first. I bet he didn't collect any no. baseball cards. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. I still, still, still looking for that one rare one there. Um, okay, the other thing I've got on here is, okay, so Tony La Russa is now going to be uh, back with the White Sox. And he, literally the day before he gets hired, he gets charged with DUI. Is he 80? I think he's late 70s. No, he is. Uh, no. Tony is. Tony is. Geez. Tony's early 70s, I believe. Yeah, he's got, he, I know he's in 70. I don't think he's 80. But so, and, and the thing is, this is actually his second DUI. He got one in. I remember that. Heaven. So I'm, I've got kind of a curious uh, question here about a you know behavior clause or um, conduct clause. Uh, do they have that in coaches' uh, contracts like they do with players? Because you know DUI is that a serious enough problem? Uh, it's it's different. It's than, a serious uh, enough problem. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, and I guess what I'm getting at, I'm not going to make necessarily comparisons, but you know, somebody gets uh, arrested for domestic violence, and they basically say, "You're done." With the team, you know, that's a serious situation. We're, that's a conduct clause, uh, uh, you know, problem. You know, it, it nullifies your contract. But does DUI do that? And do they have the same thing with, with coaches as they do with players? What do you think? Well, to be fair, to be fair, this stems from when he was stopped for driving under the influence in February. This is an incident that happened in February. And for whatever reason, it's taken all this time for him to actually be charged. And it just happened to be the day before he was introduced as the new manager of the Chicago White Sox. I don't think really anything is going to come of this uh, because it's, it's, 
what, it is a sign seven, of a big problem that he's already been busted for DUI and in his 70s still is drinking and driving. That's that is a big problem for, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, but don't you don't you think the White Sox would have done a background check? And don't don't do you, do you believe the White Sox had no idea that this actually happened before they went ahead and hired him? I don't think so. Well, and, and they, they apparently they knew about this one. And, well, they, then they, and, and they went ahead and hired him anyway. Yeah. So maybe they should uh, get him an Uber account, though. <laughs> you know, and just say, you know, it, it just if you feel like drinking, here's, you know, a, a credit card. Call Uber. No problem. I mean, I don't understand how a guy like that who has so much money can't just, you know, well, you think it's not that it's, it's a it's a pride, kind of a pride thing, you know. You think you can drive. Oh, I'm okay. And also, when you get to be a certain age, yeah, but without, without, without really knowing the facts, yeah. though, I mean, you don't know. I mean, let's just okay. So he stopped in February. Did, was he was uh, how much over the limit was it? Was he was was he unable to uh, oh, he was he unable to stand? Well, did, did, did he just did he just barely break the number? Did you, I mean oh, I, we we don't really know. He hit like a tree or, uh, you know, he, it's, it wasn't that he just got like stopped for weaving. He actually like hit something. And, and he's uh, already been busted for DUI. Once yeah. you've been busted for DUI, you really should never be drinking anything at all and getting behind the wheel. You shouldn't even have, you know, a, 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 a tumbler of NyQuil and get behind the yeah. wheel. You yeah. shouldn't. You, should, you, you owe it to society to, if you've already been busted oh. for that, to not re- uh, uh, violate the law again. I can understand people who do it the first time and don't know their limits and yeah. didn't understand that they had had too much. But once you've gone through it, you know, it's pretty severe. I do yeah. know people have gotten DUIs and it's no no picnic. No, it's you know, expensive and it's, yeah, embarrassing. I mean, what would have happened if he, you know, would have killed somebody? And do you think they still would have hired him? Probably not. No. And what happens uh, on the next DUI? If, if there is one. Again, if, even if he doesn't kill anybody, you know, what do you think? Is that a conduct clause that they would say, you know what? Well, it's, it's, it's good for him. He's so nice to animals. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's earned his, his karma back from being nice to animals. But I, if he, something like this happens again, I, I know he'll be, he'll be poisoned. He'll, he'll, they'll toss him to the... You think so? Yeah. In, in, oh. in, in, pursuit, in pursuit of fact-checking to, to give... This show credibility. Uh, Larusa is seventy six years old. Okay. He did not hit a tree. Yeah, he, he he ran into a curb, curb and he left it smoking on the side of the Phoenix area road. Yeah, that's according okay. to court records. Okay. So and yeah, yes, it is the second known drunken driving arrest for Larusa, who was who pled guilty to a misdemeanor in Jupiter, Florida, in two thousand and seven. So. There you go. And then they wonder how many times does a guy drink? Since okay. 2007, he's gotten yeah. away with it. Got away with it. But, but what do you think happens, Byrne, if he has another DUI? Do you, do you think the White Sox will uh, depart ways? I don't think so, unless, some, unless he kills I don't him. really know, because I don't, I don't really know how the White Sox run their business. I, well, let's, let's, let's cross that bridge when it happens when he's caught in the north side or the south side of Chicago. Yeah, that's right, south side. Um, all right, we have a couple more minutes before our last trivia question, which uh, I don't know if you guys will know this one. This is, uh, this is a tough one. Um, but uh, uh, anything you guys want to cover in the last couple of minutes before we cut to another break? Well, I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to cover a little bit and talk a little bit about the, the you know, kind of the parody of the, of, of the NFL. We just uh, – it, 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 in this particular year, to me, my opinion, we go week by week without really knowing really what is going to happen in these games. I, I surely thought that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would show up a little bit more against the New Orleans Saints Sunday night with Antonio Brown in the lineup. But, uh, but what you saw was a, was a one-sided affair in favor of the New Orleans Saints, which tells me, A, Tampa Bay isn't very good, or, 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 or B, this is just another matchup where you, 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 you think you know, but you just don't know. Any given Sunday. You, you play these games. 
any given Sunday. Edward, what's the trivia? Uh, what what record was set? You're Mr. Trivia. What record was set in the Tampa Bay game? Uh, the biggest loss by Brady. No. Vern, what record was set in the Tampa Bay game? Go oh, tell me, Mr. Jackman. Go ahead. Least number of of running attempts by a team in the NFL. Four for the entire game. Four. Wow. That is pretty low. Yeah. Well, in 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 in, in a back and forth of two NFL quarterbacks who keep who keep uh, outdoing each other week by week as far as c c career touchdown passes. Yeah. Uh, well, it's you, because you, they were down 28 to nothing in the early part yeah. of the second quarter. There was no point in running the ball at that point. You no. know, Tampa Bay was in a position where they, they were down so deep. Even I was like, when I looked at the score, I was like, what happened? You know, it's it, mm -hmm. it, the, the Tampa Bay defense completely fell apart, you know. Um, and Brady was down 28 to nothing early second quarter. Well, you're not going to be running the ball very much because you don't want to kill the clock. You got to try to score. So it was. It was Will this be Brady's before. last year? Everyone always says that when there's a bad game. <laughs> no, only if he gets hurt. Only if he gets really badly hurt. You yeah, know? it's kind of it's kind of up to Brady at this point. Yeah, he'll be like a George Bland. Brady, Brady, Brady's Brady, Brady's Brady's done his job for Tampa Bay. He's sold tickets. He's made Tampa relevant yeah. even more. And they're they're going to have a winning record. So 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 whatever. So 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 you those three things is just ka-ching, ka-ching, ka ka-ching. And it didn't yeah. hurt that adding the Tampa Bay organization, right? It didn't hurt adding Gronk. Okay, guys, we're going to go to our last trivia question here. Again, the topic is he hung up his cleats. Where? For what team did Eric Dickerson score his final regular season NFL touchdown? And I'm going to guess uh, that he... I think I know that team. one. I think I know really? that one. Okay. That's our trivia question. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be back with some closing comments. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Russell Jackman. And so Bill soon. Planner. So I know. Soon. That was fast. Uh, last trivia question. For what team did Eric Dickerson score his final regular season NFL touchdown? Mr. Jackman. I'm going to go with the Colts. <laughs> Wrong again. <laughs> yes, Mr. Fern. What's the answer? It wasn't Indianapolis Colts. Jeez. Huh. Okay. Uh, but it wasn't. Uh, gosh, did he go? Did, did he go back to the Rams? Maybe. Did he go back to the St. Louis Rams? No, it was the L.A. Raiders. Oh wow! I L.A. Raiders. LA wow. Raiders. How about it? Okay. All right. Yeah, a force to be reckoned with. <clears throat> All right, guys. Uh, any last uh, words before we get to our thoughts for the day? Excuse me. Uh, well, my fantasy well, um, team. Oh, how'd your fantasy team do? Both my fantasy teams won last week, although the Niners didn't. Trying to get that perfect lineup where the Niners and two fantasy teams actually win is like the hardest thing. That it will make my weekend bright, but it almost never happens. <laughs> one of the one of the three tends to lose. And when people ask me why do you do two fantasy teams is that I'm in a league that is a yardage only league and another league that counts touchdowns and, and has different lineup uh, uh, possibilities. So it's uh, they're two different rule sets. So, All right. so that, okay, well, here's our thoughts for the day. Do you know, uh, this will be the first year my family and I can't go skiing in the Alps because of this pandemic. Uh, normally it's because we can't afford it, um, nor do we know how to ski. Uh, but <laughs> Don't worry about the world ending today. It's already tomorrow in Australia. Isn't that a happy thought? Don't you like that? And then tomorrow. Okay. Though. All right. And then tomorrow it'll be the next day in Australia. You just keep going forward and forward, right? I so like call that. Australia and find out if the world's ended. And if it that's happens. Right. And that's how you find out. Very smart. You're a smart man. You must be like an attorney or something. All right. Tune in mm. next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports tri trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Adios. So long. Good night, America.